This is an international travesty. Christ. House Republicans have really, really done it this time. Jesus Christ. Ugh. And their pure contrarianism and their pure opposition to the establishment Republicans, they have not only embarrassed us on an international stage, but have spat in the face of our sacred democracy. It's just in it, the coverage is continuing now on C-SPAN. Um, I think they're on to their 13th vote as of now, I think. But if you need a recap of the absolute chaos going down on Capitol Hill, take a look at this. McCarthy fails for third long day in GOP House speaker fight. And I'm pretty sure after this vote, they're most likely going to adjourn. So let's get to it. And we'll give you a bit of coverage um, on C-SPAN because... That's pretty much the only network that's actually covering it because they're exclusively dedicated to Capitol Hill politics. And um, we'll just tell you what's going on from there. Then we'll move on to Logan Paul and uh, the fact that perhaps he is missing. So for long and frustrating third day, divided Republicans kept the speaker's chair of the House sitting empty Thursday as party leader Kevin McCarthy failed again and again in an excruciating string of ballots to win enough GOP votes to seize the chamber's gavel. I talk about voter fraud. That's typically what you do when you lose elections, right? Anyway, pressure was building as McCarthy lost 7th, 8th, and then historic ninth and 10th rounds of voting, surpassing the number it took the last time this happened 100 years ago in a prolonged fight to choose a speaker in a disputed election. And now it's um, gone up to 11th, 12th. I think they're entering their 13th now as I speak. So with McCarthy supporters and foes locked in stalemate, the House could not formally open for an, the new session of Congress and feelings of boredom, desperation and annoyance seemed increasingly evident because of that absolute <laughs> gate. And all the moron MAGA Republicans that are stalling the democratic process. We need a speaker, but but even that can't happen in this MAGA-run absolute trash world. One McCarthy critic, Matt Gates of Florida, f scum, cast votes in two rounds for Donald Trump, a symbolic but pointed sign of the broad divisions over the Republican Party's future, which is interesting because uh, he originally started out wanting to put J Jim Jordan and the speakership, oh, you know, talking about being anti that's the Republican Party's whole stick now, but apparently some of them are nominating freaking Jim Jordan to, to be the Speaker of the House. How rich is that irony? Anyway, so his vote switched from Jim Jordan um, to Donald Trump now, and I'm pretty sure in one of the votes, he was the only one to vote for Trump uh, for Speaker of the House. But... Yeah, I, he's just really inconsistent with his vote, and it's like he'd rather have literally anyone from the Republican Party but McCarthy. I mean, I guess his tier is like literally anyone off the street that'll vote in congruence with the MAGA Republicans, McCarthy, Jeffries. Um, okay, then he went further, moving the day from protest toward the absurd, informally nominating the former president to be the House Speaker in the 11th vote. See, even AP, you know, can't hide their bias here. I mean, if you want my two cents on this, AP is really good at um, covering up their bias. And obviously, news organizations constantly say that, oh, we're unbiased, we're unbiased. But the AP really does a good job at, you know, being unbiased. Every news organization has a bias. They don't want to admit it. Truly unbiased and nonpartisan media doesn't exist. But the AP is really good at being objective. So that's why I like them. Anyway. So. Here we are. As night fell on the second anniversary of the. Uh, the Capitol by Trump supporters trying to overturn Joe Biden's elections. Democrats said it was time to get serious. 
The sacred house of representatives needs a leader. Yes, we just need a speaker. Thank you. So Democrat Joe Negus of Colorado nominating his own party's leader, Hakeem Jeffries. A speaker. <clears throat> McCarthy could be seen talking one-on-one -on -one and whispered in animated conversations in the House chamber. His emissaries siddled? Sit settled up to holdouts and grueling negotiations proceeded in the GOP whips office down the hall. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh. Yeah, Christ, I need a pat on the back or something. McCarthy remained determined to persuade Republicans to end the paralyzing debate that has blighted his new GOP majority. This truly goes to show they care about drama, performative Capitol Hill politics, a show. Politics is merely entertainment for them and just an opportunity to get the guest spot on Tucker's show at 8 p.m. every night. Th that's all Republican politics have become in 2023. McCarthy's leadership team had presented a core group of the Republican holdouts with a deal on paper in exchange for their support, said one of the opponents, conservative Republican Ralph Norman of South Carolina, as he exited, exited a late day meeting. It's good, Norman said, about changes that would include mandating 72 hours for bills to be posted before votes, though details were scarce. Okay. Lest hopes get ahead of reality, he added. This is round one. Holdouts led by the Chamber's Freedom Caucus. Is that like a bunch of, you know, MAGA morons? A bunch of chuds? Anyway, Freedom Caucus are seeking ways to shrink the power of the Speaker's office and give rank and file lawmakers more influence with seats on key committees and the ability to draft and amend bills in a more open process. We're having good discussions, and I think everyone wants to find a solution, McCarthy told reporters hours earlier. The House, which is one half Congress, is essentially at a standstill, unable to launch the new session, swear in elected members, and con conduct official business. And by extension, the Democrats and the... No, no, not just the Democrats. The Senate and the presidency is pretty much also at a standstill because... The Senate has to approve most of the legislation coming from the House, and the House has to approve most of the legislation coming from the Senate. The thing is, even if a bill, a bill gets bo through both the House and the Senate, which is um, exceedingly rare, unless it's corporate subsidies, then you know that just gets passed like a fire sale. Anyway, for the for the president to actively be doing stuff and passing legislation, Congress has to. You, you know, just get a move on. And the, the president, unless they were to govern pretty much exclusively through executive orders, had little to nothing to do um, during this period. So the House, which one has as far as the election. Yet despite endless talks, a, a signs of concessions and a public spectacle, unlike any other in recent political memory, the path ahead remained highly uncertain. What started as a political novelty for the first time since 1923 had a nominee not won the gavel on the first vote has devolved into a bitter Republican Party feud and a deepening potential crisis. So um, I don't know if you're audio only, but if some of you want to just visualize this, um, these are all the votes um, that have been cast for McCarthy and Jeffries, respectively, and the others and the present votes. So. From what it looks like, Democrats have remained steadfast in their support of Jeffries for House Speaker. Really another corporate shill. McCarthy is actually starting to lose votes, and it's becoming apparent that Republicans do not have confidence in him as House Speaker because it's going down from 203, and recently it's gone as low as 200 for him. And they're just defecting to other pe voting for other people or just present. Jeffries of New York won the most votes on every ballot, but also main, remained short of a majority. McCarthy ran second, gaining no ground. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's 218 votes to win the speakership. McCarthy resisted under growing pressure to somehow find the votes he needed or step aside so the House could fully open, open fully and get on with the business of governing. Yeah, because that's what a freaking government is supposed to do, especially at the federal level. This is absolutely absurd. This, this is insane. It's a complete and utter embarrassment for the American people. And I castigate literally any 
Republican, dumbass, Neanderthal-brained, room-temperature IQ Celsius moron who voted that idiot Gates in, and any anyone else of his sycophants, um, MTG, Bobert, um, you know, and, and other far-right lunatics. Let's continue with the AP story. So, the incoming Republican chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Oh, okay. Foreign Affairs, Armed Services, and Intelligence Committees all said national security was at risk. Yeah, so get a flipping move on here, people. Come on. Like, you're supposed to be governing. I mean, maybe the House pretty much exclusively consisted of sending bills to the Senate that would absolutely fail. But I, I'd rather have that than whatever the hell this is, because... I, I, I can't stand the sight to even fathom, to even conceive of a political scenario like this. Let's go on. The Biden administration is going unchecked and there is no oversight of the White House. Republicans Michael McCall, Mike Rogers, and Mike Turner wrote in a joint statement, We cannot let personal politics place the safety and security of the United States at risk. But McCarthy's right flank detractors appeared intent on waiting him out as long as it takes. And McCarthy seems intent on just taking this to vote as many times until he can win the speakership as long as it takes even if he does have to compromise with the uh, oh maga wing of, of the republican party in the house representative scott perry republican from pennsylvania the leader of the freedom caucus asserted that mccarthy cannot be trusted and tweeted his displeasure that negotiations over rule changes and other concessions were being made public when confidences are portrayed and leaks are directed it's even more difficult to trust he tweeted republican party holdouts reportedly repeatedly put forward the name of Representative Byron Donalds of Florida, assuring the stalemate that increasingly carried undercurrents of race and politics would continue. He also put forward Republican Kevin Hearn of Oklahoma, splitting the protest vote. Donalds, who is black, is seen as an emerging party leader in the GOP, counterpart to the Democratic leader Jeffries, who is the black leader of a major political party in the U.S. Congress, and on track himself to become Speaker someday, especially if... Republicans actually win the majority in the House, which <laughs> the way Republican House leadership is going, um, that seems to be a, a reality very soon. Like, this is absolutely going to backfire for Republicans. I mean, this is an absolute joke. When you dedicate yourself to frivolous nonsense, like, God, I, I do not want to defend him, but... It, stuff like impeaching Clinton, which really, come to think of it, nobody did care about. I mean, honestly, look, I believe Clinton was this corrupt neoliberal corporatocrat, but what, what they impeached him over, the charges they actually brought against him were absolutely frivolous, and that's why his impeachment ended up backfiring politically. So he won that last midterm. At least in the House. I don't know about the Senate. Somebody might have to fill me in on that. But let's continue. This battle we are waging must end, Nels told his colleagues. Yes, 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 yes. A new generation of conservative Republicans, many aligned with Trump's Make America Great Again agenda, wanted to upend business as usual in Washington and are committed to stopping McCarthy's rise without concessions to their priorities. Twin support McCarthy has already agreed to many of the demands of his opponents, but that you know, Christ, they won't budge. One of the holdouts key asks is to reinstate a rule that would allow a single lawmaker to seat a motion to vacate the chair, essentially to call a house vote to oust the speaker. It's the same rule of a previous era of Tea Party Republicans used to threaten the removal of GOP Speaker John Boehner, and McCarthy has resisted reinstating it because he really wants the speakership, I guess. But those opposing McCarthy do not all have the same complaints, and he may never be able to win over some of them. Several Republicans appear unwilling to ever vote for McCarthy. Ballots kept producing almost the same outcome. 20, 20 conservative holdouts still refusing to support McCarthy and leaving him far short of the 218 typically needed to win the gavel. In fact, McCarthy saw his support slipping to 201 as one fellow Republican switched to vote simply present and later to 200. With just a 220-seat GOP majority, he could not spare votes. Four 
seats in the House. Christ, we are more bipartisan than that. Uh, n- not bipartisan, partisan than ever. Sorry. Thursday was a third long day. Okay. The new Republican majority was not expected to be in session on Friday, which is the anniversary of the January 6th attack on the Capitol. A prolonged and divisive speaker's fight would almost certainly underscore the fragility of American democracy after the attempted insurrection two years ago. We must open the House and proceed with the people's work, California Democrat Nancy Pelosi, the former speaker, said in a tweet. Some Republicans appeared to be increased, growing increasingly uneasy with the way the party has taken charge after the midterm elections, only to see the chamber upended over the speaker's race in their first days in the new majority. Um, I think a week. <laughs> They've only, you know elected these new representatives and put them in congress colorado republican ken buck voted for mccarthy but said wednesday he told him he needs to figure out how to make a deal to move forward or eventually step aside for someone else the right flank conservative conservatives led by the freedom caucus and aligned with former president donald trump appeared emboldened by the standoff even though trump publicly backed mccarthy the disorganized start to the new Congress pointed to difficulties ahead with Republicans now in control of the House, much the way that some past Republican speakers, including John Boehner, had trouble leading a rebellious right flank. The result, government shutdowns, standoffs, and Boehner's early, early retirement. This is exactly what people mean when they say, you know, Republicans have ruined American politics. Just this purely government breaking factionalism i mean obviously there's tons of uh, factionalism on the left but for some reason the democrats the liberals will, will just vote completely in unison like if a justice democrat were to propose you know some sort of plan for mm-hmm. medicare for all and Pelosi told him, no, actually, we're going to keep the current system. Obamacare is based and let's embrace austerity. They'd be like, uh, uh, y- y- yes, uh, neoliberal mother. Yes, sir. We, we, we respect you. We will not fall out of line. <laughs> Absolute nonsense. But the Republicans, endless factionalism. Uh, of course, as, as the article mentioned, we have seen this in um the early 2010s when boehner really had uh trouble leading the tea party um but <sighs> the disorganized starts in the new congress pointed to difficulties ahead with republicans on okay yeah the longest flight for the gavel a fight for the gavel started in late 1855 and dragged on for two months with 133 ballots during debates over slavery in the run-up to the civil war jesus christ man if you writers mary claire okay this is an utter embarrassment for for america and i i just only want to stay on it for a few more minutes because although it is an important issue in american politics it's just it, it honestly pains me to cover it okay so let's go to c-span's coverage of it i, I think they have like a live vote tally all right hell is going on Sixty-nine thousand people watching that is utterly insane let me pull it up for you here okay so uh to describe what's going on for most of my audio viewers audio only viewers um so they're going to adjourn and apparently because republicans have the majority it looks like that's what's going to happen and they're going to go home for tonight but uh what's interesting is that the democrats do not want to leave congress they do not want to adjourn so i i guess they want to just wear some of the more moderate republicans down and just you know generally um maybe flip some more of the moderate republican votes to actually put jeffries in but i really don't think republicans are gonna let that happen excuse me all right
and um yeah so let's watch their Sorry. coverage of the last Hold 13 11 and it went past that ninth ballot right Right. So, as you can see, McCarthy, um, at the least amount of votes, he's actually been able to grasp from Republicans. And um, Jeffries is steadfast with the 212 votes. I guess Republicans really like him, but after all, I mean, they are a bunch of corporate neoliberals, so... What's interesting, Hearn, um, he's also been a proposed option, and um, a bunch of others with only one present vote. Um, obviously, Gates voting for Trump. The 11th ballot, Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives. Negotiations are ongoing. We're following all of the reporting from Capitol Hill on, Capitol Hill on C-SPAN. To put what's happening on the floor in context, historical context, Peter Baker of New York Times reporting only seven times in U.S. history has it taken more than nine votes to pick a speaker. Not in the last century and a half. The House is now in place. In place. It hasn't been since 1859. Christ. It took 44 votes to choose a leader. And uh, another... Yeah, uh, one other thing to point out, uh, somewhat unrelated, but at the same time not, because it pertains uh, to the House. As of now, the Republican, no, no, not just the Republicans, but the House of Representatives has never been less representative. Um, watch Mr. Beat's video on this subject. It's of the same, you know, topic. Um, and it basically says, as the population of the U.S. increases, we're not adding representatives to actually um, represent, I guess, the will of the people. And that's such a disgrace for American democracy. Uh, on the history of this, I'm going to turn it to 1.5 uh, you know, speed. Ballot, and the House made history when it went past that ninth ballot earlier today. And here they're going to announce that McCarthy doesn't have enough votes. This is so painful. This is so painful. Tellers agree in their tally that the total number of votes cast is 432, of which the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries of the state of New York has received 212. of the state of California has received 200. It's not a majority. They haven't picked a speaker yet. The Honorable Byron Donald of the state of Florida has received 12. The Honorable Kevin Hearn of the state of Florida Probably a Freedom Caucus person. Thank you to those who laughed for laughing at that, because what an absolutely preposterous, fucking ridiculous notion to entertain, okay? Thinking of electing Trump, especially at a time like this, when not only his corporation has been convicted of tax fraud, but also he's under an absolute mountain of investigations. Like, you've got to be kidding me, man. 
Um, it, Speaker of the House actually doesn't have to be a member of the House. It, it can literally just be, um, I'm pretty sure, anyone or at least any American. But, you know, obviously it, it, it is better to elect one of their own. I, I do agree with them on that. Received the majority of the votes cast. The Speaker has not been elected. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Madam Clerk, I move that the House stands adjourned until noon tomorrow. The question is for the motion that the House stands adjourned until noon tomorrow. Those in favor say aye. Those in favor. Oh my God, screw you people. In the, in the opinion of the chair, the no's have it. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the oh. A sufficient number having risen the yeas and nays. This is abysmal. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This will be a 15 minute vote. Okay, good. Um Yeah, so I I guess they're going to cast their votes. Um via yeah, and it's updating in real time now cuz C-SPAN has it. So let's fast forward to this and then Over we'll bigs. in the All stream. Yes to adjourn. You know those names. Oh my god. They are part of the 20 that have been oh my god out. it's tied now okay so it does look like republicans have it yeah all filtered out to go vote on the motion to adjourn roy and perry didn't respond when i asked how negotiations nine two one and all others 202 hearing out seven everything that you've seen this week from c-span cameras let's put it on 1.5 all right, here we go. With a minute left on this motion to adjourn, so some more reporting from Capitol Hill. Max Cohen, who reports for Punchbowl News, says tons of me tons of me members were meeting in Tom Ember's office. He is the Republican whip. Massey, Clyde, Roy, Norman, Perry, Gothar, Bishop, Jordan, among them, all filtered out to go vote on the motion to adjourn. Roy and Perry didn't respond when I asked how negotiations were progressing. Jennifer Schott, who reports for States News, reports that Lauren Boebert says she's not part of any talks over speaker while walking out of the Capitol, quote, I'm not a part of any negotiations, is what she told that reporter. All right. So, I don't know if they're actually going to take a break for their own safety and for their own health, but Jesus, do they need to work out some sort of deal with the Freedom Caucus? Um, actually, we might do a segment on the Freedom Caucus 